Hello everyone and welcome to uh, week 7 game 2 of Bulldog Silver Analysis of Counter Logic Gaming. Big win yesterday versus Team Liquid. We got Evil Geniuses today. And I... Wait, are we starting Sticks I I don't know yet. I haven't seen his face or wins, and I, we don't have titles on the side. So I, I said yesterday that I hope we start Sticks A again, because Wind was, eh, alright. Sen is a very good ban against Bang. He has not died on it yet. Oh, we do have Wind still in. Very yeah, give me 2-0 then. Yeah, what was that? All the way back in week three. Second, or first day of week three. Lock in the Janna, I'd, I'd respect it. It's a flex. And they have used support top laners. Oh my Do it. In two of their three wins. Oh, no, the Syndra. That's a very, very, very smart first pick. I respect the hell out of that. Poe Belter played so well, it's such a strong champion. He's getting a weird change next patch, so this is kind of the the last patch of it being like in his weird overtuned state on the professional stage. We got Coach Irene there, which feels bad that he's not on CLG anymore. But he did respond to me once. On, in Twitter DMs, which was cool. The Varus is whatever. I mean, Varus Tom Kench did absolutely body us. When you have two lines of poke damage of different varying uh, damage types, it can really still be effective, or it can go the more common on hit version and do. Okay, and Ash. Tom Kent's gonna I don't hate Ash. Keep him safe, obviously. Varus has no dashes of his own. Wind seems like seems to like the very mobile lady carries. And Brom, I would no, Brom's bad. Evil geniuses. Look at how they know to work the mind of the crowd. Yeah, farming likes. Right Come now. on. Brom gets bodied the by Tom oh, Ken's that's, that's gonna get some likes for me. I still think <laughs> Echo is incredibly strong right it's, now. Um, it's it's solid. Regions have top ELO for solo queue as Echo mains. Um, both North America in EU as well. The Dark Harvest or. Uh, yeah, Dark Wait. Is definitely good. Yeah, you, you can't hey, I thought Ruin was the top of the ladder. He is. He's not an Echo main. He may not be the top of the ladder anymore. But the Brom is not good in Devar's Tom Kench. We've seen that time and time again. So I'm not a big fan of that. On Echo because the auto attacks actually we choke out the jungle for Echo considering the passive. It's it's, it's definitely if you're speed. if you're facing more tanks though and you have it's more time to get out autos. The I still Aatrox ban lane, Echo, want that it's big weird to me. Damage. You go in, you uh, it tells you me that we probably want to play the, Q, the Jana. You cast Q while you're rolling into uh, proto belting. Proto -belting. And then oh, and then picking double melee. After your e two lands. Solo laners, unless if they pick a range top, which would be weird, because I don't know if there's any good range top laners right now. Um, yeah, it's actually pretty easy once you get used to it. It sounds cool when you're like E1, Q, E2, because it's the two different knights, but C7. It's, it's actually, yeah, it's actually not that hard. The only thing you have to get used to is throwing your Q out while you're tumbling. Um, and then obviously you can do uh, cast your W into Zonia so they're all survived. Right, let's so, see. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, the whole point of the rainbow here. is that Ash is a great target. Jar Sindra is a great target for Echo. Okay. And Yorick is a great target for getting cheers from the crowd. Yes, it is. I like Warwick. Though. Oh, the, the, the disrespect Warwick. Yeah, this is, uh, this is Other. I, the, uh, I can respect CLG it. For starting AD Carry who always hovers Warwick. Oh yeah, because Sticks isn't on stage. Real recognize real. Thanks, Bang. 
Echo mid lane has been counter pick into Syndra forever. Uh, trying to play, it's an aggressive matchup though. You have to have, that's you have to I'm work off of uh, kill pressure. So yeah. That's why I like the lead right. pairing here. Because and hopefully this will make around. no sense, but Gragas is a good pick. Pick the Rick. Their EG is being smart by leaving top up for a what should we call it a counter pick? When you see Gragas and Syndra already locked in, you don't want AP top side. Gangplank very very good at helping out in those cross map plays, obviously with the ultimate. Can we even get anything through the 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 York wall? No, no, so strong. Fair enough. York into so the gangplank gang is good. Not a bad idea, by the way. Uh, because Jesus, not, not a great pick here. The York grave circle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jace, though, actually gaining a lot of popularity. Um, on I don't think it's because of the increased value that good for here. So and melee champions dealing uh, more damage relatively. I think we lost bot lane. And then won the top side of the map because Pobelter played so well in the Syndra. Uh, it's it's a Gragas. Gragas is always good. Usually more useful later in the game than Lee Sin. I think Gangplank is just better than Jace. Cross map play, you, you have to snowball on Jace. Kumo is one of the weaker top laners in the league. Not really going to snowball. And Ruin is just very good, so it should be pretty advantageous for us. The bot lane is what I'm most worried about. But there's a reason it's in your head, Riv. This is Kumo's iconic champion. If you can attach an iconic champion to a player this early in their career, uh, that's the one he's going to get. So let's see it. Kumo, Jace in the Ruin's GP. It's definitely advantage early, and he wants Wind to... Wind looking good again. We talked about. And we got the mid lane matchup that does at least have aggression from one side. Syndra for Pobelter. Jizuke looking like a 40-year-old dude from accounting. Jizuke is trying to jump in his face all the time and rewind time to do it all over again. This one's going to be a good one. Not even accounting. This is like IT nerd is coming over to North America. All right. This is the type of champion I want to see him on. Echo and the Rise are the two modes that pop into my head and... Hopefully we can see some of those big aggressive players. Jizuke is just mediocre. Jizuke in person. He always talks about how, ah oh yeah, the mid laners here, they don't play to win the lane. They don't take chances. <laughs> they don't play aggressively. And so I want to see him make those choices, play aggressively, take the chances. And if he has success doing that and playing that way, then he will force change in his opponent. If you play that yeah, way... Yeah, but he's not nearly as good as a lot of people. Yep. All right. We hit him with the fast forward here. Jizuke just isn't as good as a lot of the people in North America. Like Bjergsen, Jensen, Niski. Uh, I mean, I would say Poe Belcher is better. Like Frog in Power of Evil. I mean, he's better than Ryomer Aika. So, echo, so it's good situation. So that's why he's got that going for him. And how have you as a team worked he's around creating slightly better than Golden Glue? Jizuke and try and achieve some more consistency. Uh, yeah, so actually, people, I think we have some problem with, I think, unconsistent. But I think for now, I think we seems to much better because even in scream, we don't don't make the, some risk play. We just instantly of that. We just play for team play. So I think it's much better as our team. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and see that team play in action. Weird that Weekly is starting off leashless. Leashless. The famousness, like we were talking about in Champions yeah. Select, this has always been a counter pick into Syndra because of the mobility of Echo. And he plays yeah, he does of kind of assassination threat, the kill threat, uh, to go win the that level the one trade, maybe uh, even level two. To the he does well in the matchup, but. In. And trunk her down. Hmm. Basically, I guess the uh, Ash is much better e against the Virus Kench than the Misfortune does. Yeah, but Poe Belter is just here. chunking him. Yeah, that's really smart. 
put him on par with the Echo. But basically Gives him some mobility to, uh, off with a to escape the Echo all in. Zuke, pulled out there kind of baiting him and staying on that Got range. good vision of Sven. Very good close uh, mouth usage there for both players. Pulled out to be able to keep the range, doesn't take so. the bad end of the trade. But when you really get excited for this mid lane matchup is when you introduce junglers. Gragas and Lee Sin, extremely good um, at ganking towards the mid lane. Yeah, both of them right are now, good early gankers. Gragas right scales right better, so but Lee Sin fights better early on, especially in like the 2v2. Makes it much more difficult. You don't go for trades unless you're hard committing, and if the Gragas is there, it's a big punish. So he has to Look at top lane. At no point should Jace be behind and farm. If you're not ahead and farm as Jace, you lose. It's the entire point of playing Jace. You're like nearly 10 CS back at this point. At three minutes, you're just... You, you fucked up. Yeah. You're down an entire wave on the, like, fucking... What? Fifth wave of the game? And, I mean, that's a lane that Gangplank should not be winning, but he is. And we're going Ian everywhere else. That's a massive advantage for CLG. That's so big. Um, what is happening there? Forcing a Jace off of turret at five minutes. That is incredibly well done. Like, that is so hard to do. Ruin is just body. Holy shit. And when going even with what is a decent bot lane, like a pretty solid middle of the pack bot lane. Jazuke starting to win that. Pobelter doing a good job of playing to his strong side and not playing to Echo's strong side not giving them an opportunity to get first blood good work yeah we're losing a little bit early bot lane but we're win winning early top lane which really shouldn't be possible in this. Like, that should not be a matchup that the Gangplank wins, ever. But he's crushing it. And they, they pick themselves into the matchup. It's the worst part of all of this. Did he use his ultimate on the trade? Or did he back by his boots and then immediately ult back in the lane? Because that's what I thought he did. 
Holy shit, this top lane. I can't get... Like, they don't have to really do anything. They don't have to do anything for a couple of minutes. Because they just massively outscale. The evil geniuses doesn't generate themselves a lead. They're just fucked. Because in the mid and late game, and apparently the early game, game playing just is better. Holy shit. It is not going to get better quick for him. This is a weird play. They don't have priority top lane. Bot lane up. We see Bang already coming over. And it's not going to be Suzuki helping out on this one. I guess they do have a bunch of control wards. Like EG may have manipulated the map just enough to make sure they're not contested here on Ridden Perils. Very nice move, especially with the. That's weird. That they were able to get that. But, I mean. CLG does have a gold advantage at this point. Problem is the Tom Catch on the Evil Genius side, right? That's why it's not a fair trade for uh, Wind and Bang. Um, just eat them right out of the arrow. Meanwhile, the Brom trying to stand in front as well with the Unbreakable. Oh, they're lane swapping. Good rotation there from EG though. Bang and to try and get Jason advantage. Oh. wanted it for a second there. What do you just get the damage on the bang? Push it back. Hit it. So close. No cigar. We are sending sticks A up. Or not sticks A wind. Feels weird. Did not prefer it not to be sticks A. Feels so weird. And Povelter getting himself a small advantage. And they're sitting on the Rift Herald right now. Don't know what they're going to do with it. I mean, because they swapped it down, he's able to push one wave into the turret. That's getting denied, so Ruin won't pick it up. And he immediately goes right back out topside. Run away from the gangplank, basically. Uh, it works. After he was able to get early jungle attention. And now, finally, he's able to get some lethality in. Pick, pick up his first Zerk, so he'll have a little bit more bite. I mean, the map state is just kind of going steady. CLG has a small lead, mostly due to the game playing. And we're just chilling. And Rune is just playing extremely well. But we're starting to drop some of that lead that we had. Okay, we don't we don't have much vision control. Feels weird when Rune isn't on a support. We have like no vision control. They drop the Herald bot lane? Yeah. That's gonna be a ton of gold. Bunch of extra money and CLG are forced to go that long way around to try and answer. 
you know, we're, I mean, they're pressuring pretty well. We're not responding well. But, oh, that's, that's a TP. Wow. Oh, this feels so sloppy. This just... Scatter, and it's going to be the kill coming in from Wiggly in the jungle. We're now one for one on this fight as wind has gone down and the mountains will rise as the fight yep, that was Double just sloppy, and it gave Kumo a lead. All lane for this fight to happen. Yeah, Kumo oh, wow, in, oh, two kills and a bounty now on that chase. Meanwhile, that was Garrett so fucking sloppy, and with the extra damage, that was just uncoordinated at every level. Fit. It burns down low enough for that was so bad. Q, Mike Q comes in. Evil geniuses get the dragon. They get the extra kills. They also burn more oh. flashes. That's the just a big disappointment. So all going according to the evil plan. Super split on that one. Back and forth. Like I must see it again because it was so hard to even see who would have the right positioning. You got a bad dragon trail that could have come in really well over. I don't know what it. It's a stretch mouthpiece is. Imagine it's one of those things that like locks your lips in place and makes you talk all weird. Yeah, we just. Wind has no idea where he's supposed to be on the map. He, he just has no fucking clue. Doesn't go for the offensive uses. He does have a top ten. He's really bad. Want to get any snatch or anything, but went with the physical damage reduction because barrel chains. A lot of AD carries, I guess, have nightmares of like a barrel chain from gangplanks. So you get a bit of extra armor stuck into the build. Varus Tom Kench just seems to be not good for us. Just seems to body. A little bit more and Ruin doesn't have a CS lead anymore. And we're down 2,000 gold. And two dragons. Like, and this is looking sketchy. It is not fun. We chose a pretty passive comp, so it's at least for like the first 15 minutes. So, because Syndra Gragas is really our only early playmaking. And, and Wiggly just walks forward into the damage. Okay, Poe Belter, very nice. Wiggly's dead, so is Smoothie. Uh, Ruin isn't here. Fucking Kuma with all of the cleanup kills. The thing is, he got fucking bodied early game. Wind is gonna die. So that is that's annoying. Kuma Ruin bodied Kumo, and then we just kind of gave the game away. Feels real bad. We just gave him a bunch of free shit. Then it kind of looks like he thought, oh, did I get it or did I not get it? Wind. Oh my gosh. Like the wind. Yeah. I mean, this is CLG teammate protection here. Everybody's trying to bodyguard a wind from Suzuki. Quick, protect the guy that shouldn't get that be on stage kill, because not he's not that good. Can ruin and or Poe Belter carry us this game? Basil always hovering right behind Bang there. The Devour Summoner spell 
always at the ready. I don't I don't agree with the Brom. Feels real bad. Well, if you can get this shut down, nope. Didn't even get a summoner spell. <sighs> a not very useful dragon when just put himself in a terrible fucking position. Oh my god. This is so un. This is just so sloppy. Oh god. Cobalter, you're gonna fucking die. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Get, get wind out of there, please. No more. No more. Oh my god, that was so... So sloppy. That was so sloppy. Holy crap. That was fucking pathetic. The Jace was down 20 farm and lane, and somehow he's fed. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. Why, why, why was that not communicated? Like, either you go all in for the dragon, or you all back off. You don't go half and half. Both of his previous protectors, Riv, Pobetra and Smoothie, had been killed, so nobody's around to help him out, and he goes down to Suzuki in the third attempt. Yeah, starting to fall apart the and look at that fucking CS difference bot. We are just getting bodied everywhere on the map. Rune's still ahead in CS. And he hasn't died. Everyone else has just fed the Jace. That has to feel so bad. If you don't give the Jace a bunch of free kills, it's a free pretty much a free game because he's useless like if, if he's not ahead at this point in the game he's useless if he's just even at this point in the game he's useless but no instead he does fucking so much damage Trinity Force. <laughs> but he's still so far behind. Jizuke has two items. They have a Kench. So it's really hard to kill anybody. I mean, we can kind of hold the side lanes. Our AD carry is absolutely useless. Like, he's, I would say he's a stun bot, but he has failed to hit a single stun this game. So... I mean, Ruin's fine. But we're level, we're behind levels, we're behind gold. Just behind in every single facet of the game. Dodge through the uprights. 
and it just feels fucking terrible. Do we do we not have a response to the virus, Tom Kench? Like fucking give Bang Senna. If you can't play against this shit, and it's not just against this one team. We failed multiple times against it. We picked Brom into it, even though Brom fucking loses the matchup. Real hard. He does not do well into the Vars Tom Kench matchup. Except if you go strength in numbers, you just kind of get bodied in the solo lanes. Because they have a 5 kill Jace and a 2 item Echo. We're both levels and gold ahead. Zuke almost zeroing out Wiggly. You saw a summoner heal come in there to take him back up to about 200 HP from Smoothie, but it had to be that. Now you run this into this issue. You're going to get pincered. Your, your Ash arrow is pretty much useless. One, because he can't hit any anybody with it. And two, they have a Tom Kench. You have to fight this. He has not... Oh my fucking god. Wind is so bad. He's at least doing damage this fight. That's the first fucking fight I've seen him do damage. But it doesn't matter. The game's fucking over already. Get wind off of the fucking stage, please. Kumo's messing around. Wants to add more insult to injury. Try and get this red. Can he snipe it? PLB taking him home. Almost. Nope, he's gonna run through the real home. You just got bodied by fucking an native North American junk or top laner on Jays. This is the most pathetic loss of the season. Holy shit. Wind hasn't hit a single arrow. Well, he hit one on Tom Kench, but he was going for Echo and missed. Horribly. He's nearly a hundred CS behind. And the fucking gangplank is Rune is still ahead in CS after being down five kills. And you're constantly getting flanked like that. Doing nothing about it. That was a really good ulti by Smoothie. Oh my god. I guess Ruin has two items, so there's a chance he can carry, but I don't think he's strong enough to carry past a 10,000 gold deficit. God, get... Okay, that's a decent pick. That was pretty fucking good by... Po Belter, when you got a kill. Yeah, this is so bad. This was probably our worst game of the split. It was so sad. Get, get Wind out of there, please. That was his first kill. He's so bad. He is so bad. I don't know why we put him on the stage in the first place. I'm not. I'm usually not one to flame players, but holy shit, is he bad? He does not bring anything to this team. Please. This is so... This was so fucking sad. This, this was so bad, it, didn't, it doesn't look like CLG deserves to be in the LCS. This was so fucking bad. Holy shit. And we beat Team Liquid yesterday. 
right before we closed in on the last few weeks. Like, we beaten Team Liquid, TSM, and these guys. Like, TSM and Team Liquid, those are quality wins. Like, that was a... That was a 4v5 as well. Like, Jizuke wasn't there for most of the fight. a slight downgrade when we did this but holy shit it's like the difference between fucking diamond and silver this is so sad it, it does it feels like we don't have a fucking 80 carry oh what's your one job as ash use your ultimate oh can you hit a single fucking ultimate on someone other than tom kenj no at least he's doing he's doing good damage there, but he's so fucking weak that it didn't matter. Oh my god, that was so fucking sad. Jesus. Don't don't do not ever put wind on the stage again. Oh my god. Yesterday he was mediocre, but he wasn't a detriment to the team yesterday. Today he he just dragged us down constantly, just losing lane, always being in the wrong lane assignment, getting caught out in team fights, positioning poorly, missing ultimates. It was just fucking sad. That was so sad. Like all you had to do is not get bodied pre-15 minutes by the Jays. You were fucking winning that lane. The one lane that they should easily win. And then you got absolutely stunned. Oh my fucking god, that was so sad. I'm fucking tilted. Holy shit. Get Stixay back on the stage next week. Please. For my sanity as a fan, please get sticks it back on that fucking stage. I'm begging you.